have one of these many years ago mm -hmm. and it was awesome. Yeah, that's one word to describe it I suppose. Um, well, it was 430 horsepower, it was decent. Yeah, it's got a box on the back. Yeah, I know. I've, I've come a long way Italy, since then, I've gone to, the, <laughs> gone to the German side of things since then. Come all the way, now I've got fit and toe. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so obviously it's a Vauxhall, what have we got today? We so got? this is 2007 Vauxhall Astra VXR. 2 litre Z20 LEH engine, uh, K6 hybrid turbo, Decker 68 injectors, in tank pump, crossover delete, 3 inch pipe exhaust, all, all the normal kind of stuff. Um, EDS copy inlet manifold. And we're doing, it, doing the tuning with Rich from Rabid or Tune Society, whichever you want to know this him as. Got rods as well, this is Forge, yeah. So, as far as I believe, it's a stock spec engine with rods. Mm -hmm. I don't know the brand offhand. Um, it was done quite a while ago by a couple of friends, um, Alex and Glenn, they sorted that all out. Um, so rods aren't gonna be an issue because normally from memory, you tend to stop 350 foot pounds where you kind of, yeah. you wanna be a little bit below that and you'll be all right. <clears throat> um, but obviously yeah, with, the, with the rods, that's not an issue. Mm -hmm. But I think he's got an aim of about three, 330, 340, I think is where we're looking roughly. Okay, and um, low to more than no, I mean, so this was a conversation we had this morning. He's got stock cams. Mm -hmm. So when, when I bought my car originally, mine was Courtney Stage 2. Obviously, over time, more was done to it. Um, had rods put in the engine, went for a Garrett setup from Courtney. Had it mapped on standalone by Garrett APT. Obviously, he facilitated all the ECU and whatnot. Um, and I was told, categorically, you will not do like more than 400 horsepower stock cams. Or even even hitting 400, I was told, wouldn't happen. And I was like, yeah, all right, we'll prove you wrong. Um, stopped at 4.30 at 1.8 bar boost, and there was still more to go. But the conversation, I think for the spec with where we are, cams will help make more power. So it's not, it's not a case of can't, it's a case of efficiency, which stands to reason. Um, but like I was saying to Rob, you know, we, we don't do loads of, VXR tuning it anymore, like all the ones we do are through Rich. Um, and I'll be honest, we don't do a lot of them because most of them are heaps. Like, you know, like I said to him, we probably have one, maybe two in 10 that come in for the tuning session, do the session and leave and actually complete the session without any major problem. Um, most of them that we get just aren't fit for tuning pretty much. Voxel life, yeah. Yeah, but um, not saying that all voxels are bad, just, you know, a lot of them. So you'd regularly see companies like Courtney Sport posting cars of this kind of spec with cams making like 335 uh, on a stock engine, obviously minus the cams. So that's quite, you know, quite an achievable sort of number. But like I said, it's, it's kind of one of them we, yeah, we've all just kind of said, we'll see what it will do and, and go from there pretty much. So realistically, if you wanted more power than where we're aiming for today, the spec is there to go further. Yeah. Sort of to be fair, I wouldn't even do the cams personally. I'd strap a Garrett to it and be, and be done with it. I mean, my car was basically the same spec as this. This has got an intercooler as well. I did have the same intercooler as this, but we had some issues with flow and efficiency. So we changed it to the Pro Alloy setup again from Courtney. They um, had it developed for them by Pro Alloy. Really, really good, not cheap, but extremely efficient. Um, 
but personally I changed the cooler, strap a Garrett and you'll be well over 400 horsepower without any grief. All the fuel system, the engine, everything will take it with the mods it's currently got. Um, that would personally be my way of thinking. Okay, cool. Just from experience. Yeah, so we've got a what, basic? Set. Yeah, so we, I've already sent a read to Rich. We're having some problems with um, the platform we're using at the minute to, or the, the software. Um, software portal we're using to do this we're having some issues with so he's actually got to build me the file manually so he's now doing that um and then yeah we're going to flash that on do a couple of pulls get some logs see where we go from there Not bad, 314.9, so basically 315 horsepower, uh, 393 newton meters. We will insert a graph there. Um, looks like we're kind of running out of puff already because we're, yeah, we're up to pretty much 100% of duty um, for the turbo top end. So at the minute, it's mainly going to be probably, I'll send the logs to Rich and see what he says, get his opinion, but it's probably going to be try and throw a bit of timing at it, try and smooth the graph out a bit and she'll make what she'll make. Can't be what it'll be. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, the, the graph's a little bit wobbly, so it'd be nice to smooth it out a bit. Um, and obviously, if we can pick up power anywhere with timing, then ideal. Um, so yeah, I think that's gonna be pretty much the plan. Okay, cool. Let's see what she does. <laughs>
completely now? Or? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, improvements have been made. 328 horsepower, 411 newton meters. Okay. Um, picked up power kind of all the way through the mid range and up the top end. Graph's a lot smoother as well. Which yeah, you insert right well. there for a second. Um, but she, yeah, she's not done too bad. I mean, a bit more timing in there as well, and it's not really showing any signs of knock. I mean, there's there's a very very small bit of knock that's like 0.75 of a degree, and then 1.5 degrees, and then that's it. Okay. And that's just on one cylinder, and the whole rest of the run's clean, so it's nice and safe, um, which is that's good. What we want, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's like I, we had a talk about a load of things this morning before we actually got it on the dyno. And it's about you know intercooler efficiency, reliability, repeatability as well. Um, so if this had, for example, the Pro had a cooler set up on it, yeah. how much power do you think it's going? The Pro Alloy cooler is bigger, yeah. quite a bit bigger, so it would probably be a bit laggier. The only issue I think with running that cooler on this setup is it's a stock or a small frame turbo. Yeah. Um, and I'm not going to say it would struggle to fill it, but sometimes it, sometimes turbos can struggle to keep charge systems pressurised, mm -hmm. um, and then you'll lose power as well. So my main issue with the cooler that's on here is ambient ambient on that pass was four and a half degrees, um, and we're seeing 30, nearly 31 degrees up top. So we, you know we're like 25 and a half degrees over ambient. It's not great, but no. then equally we've seen. I mean. Pete, who dropped him off, his 135 has been on the channel a couple of times, and you know, with a stock cooler, we were seeing like nearly 70 80 degrees. I think mm -hmm. the poor quality cooler he got cut it down by 10 degrees, then he got a CSF race cooler, it cut temp, you know, temp and half. So, but you know, we were testing that that was summertime, I think that was like 26 degrees. Yeah, well, I was about to say, obviously, at the moment, it is very hot. Yeah, I mean, obviously. well, so yeah, with, it's be dense, yeah, so I mean, with his car, for example. We were testing at like 26 degrees ambient mm -hmm. on the CSF cooler. It made 36, which was 10 above. And like I said, we're very, very cold at the minute, and we're seeing like 25 above. Yeah, so, so warmer temperatures is it probably going to be struggling? Yeah, but uh, I've already—I mean, I've already said to Rob, with where he'll want to go next, because it's on a stock clutch. Mm -hmm. So obviously, clutch upgrades, diff, um, is a big must in these. And I said, if you want to push for more power, personally, I go the Garrett route. And there's plenty, I mean, I use the Courtney kit, absolutely great. Um, all the kit they sell, should I say, which is Nortec Manifold and a Gen 2 ball bearing Garrett GTX. Um, but there's plenty of companies out there who do kits, so definitely a good way to go. Yeah, like I said, it's, I mean, you could strap that on and add 100 horsepower. Um, the fuel system he's got will do it. The engine, the way it is, will do it. So it's quite a, an easy way to gain some power. Awesome. So obviously because we're out of duty, we're kind of out of time now, aren't we all done? Yeah, it looks like we're going to be done for this one. Um, well, it would be a fairly nippy aspirin, wouldn't it, I suppose? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've, I've driven a few at this power and they're, you know, they're, they're reasonably quick. Yeah. Like I said, the, the, the biggest issue with these on a stock diff is torque steer. Yeah, um, that's a problem to stop on these. Though, yeah, they want to send you into a bush pretty much <clears> all the time and the more power and torque you add, the worse it gets. Mm -hmm. um, but then I said, going back to the whole, you know, when I had my, the, the diff was the best mod I ever did to it. Yeah. Um, cornered extremely well, put the power down really well. And I found it easier to drive at say 430 with 380 foot pound than I did at near 300 brake with 300 foot pound. Yeah. So. Yeah, don't forget about the hand and modification, basically is the lesson there. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> right, okay. Well, guess on to the next one. Yeah, we'll see you in the next one.